I remember, I burn my bridges, I'm not going begging to anybody, I am responsible, and if the shit hits a fan, <laughs> that's it, I'm responsible. Welcome to this episode of Saj Meets. Today we're at the home of Neville Wright, the man that turned 37 pence into 100 million pounds. And he purchased his first home for 650 pounds and today he's doing 10 million pound property deals. Neville, 37 pence to 100 million, come on, is yeah. that even possible? I didn't think it was. I never even thought about it, to be quite honest. It, it never crossed my mind until the end. Well, I say the end, until the 100 million was there, which was uh, like, uh, 10 years ago now, uh, so I never ever thought about it, but it is possible, and I know, and I am amazed myself, and there we are, yeah, so it's, it is possible. So for those people that may be watching this right now thinking, well, maybe it was just luck, it was right place, right time, what would you say to them? Well, it could be, could be right place, right time, but um, it wasn't, uh, and uh, you, you go through uh, with your goals, you've got it in your mind what you want and I never thought of what I wanted uh, was what we got. So I'd got my 50 year goals was to be here still and, and was to be uh, healthy and um, fairly wealthy, you know, so that you, you secure. Yeah. So I got me 20 year goals uh, and my 10 year goals. My 10 year goals was like to be uh, financially secure. So then you come down to your yearly goals. What do you want for this year? And what do you want for this month? What do you want for this week? What do you want for the day? And what do you want for this minute? So those minute to minute goals, doing the job, serving the customer, whatever we was doing in the building industry or in, in retail, focus. Yeah. And that was, and we were focusing on what we could do. And one of the great things was uh, going home at night, I'd say to myself, have I sold the business today or have I bought it? And what I mean by that is what I did today did it enhance the business? Is the business worth more today when I left it than it was when I went in? Or, and, and that I've sold it basically, and if I'd bought it, is the business worse tonight than it was this morning or is it just stayed the same because if it stays the same you're going backwards yeah so it's about whether you're adding value or taking value away from exactly what you're doing. because we're all in businesses for those that are watching many people that are watching this might be thinking about getting into business or they might have been in business a little while and they're thinking what's next how can we grow how can we really take it to the next level for those that maybe don't know you haven't come across you before what's your what's your backstory uh well the great thing uh, about uh, when, we, when I started at school was uh, I was dyslexic and nobody knew what dyslexia was in the 50s uh, and I'd got ADHD as well so again nobody knew what ADHD was so we've all been labelled with different things now but um, dyslexia uh, meant that I didn't see what everybody else saw uh, on, on the on books or on the board when I was being taught so it didn't mean anything to me it, it I, I couldn't grasp where those letters would were where they stayed they didn't stay anywhere because every time I blinked my eyes they were changing places 
and I couldn't understand how does everybody else around me know what they what those words are uh, and so uh, I was disruptive and uh, called a um, stupid a little sod my mother used to call me a little sod right I should have killed you at birth I know she didn't mean it but that's how I, I must have wound her up something chronic and, um, and that's probably people didn't really understand how to react to or respond to what they were or what you were experiencing that they, they didn't know mm. and I couldn't explain and so you were just uh, unruly yeah. uh, and you were disruptive and you were stupid because the things you did didn't make any sense to uh, nor what I would say normal people yes. you know it's um, I, and they didn't realize so I'd get into trouble and uh, and the more uh, they the more I couldn't do the more they wanted me to concentrate on what I couldn't do yeah now in today's society I would always recommend forget about what you can't do especially in business doesn't matter what you can't do what you can do yes it, that is the thing and then if you do things that you can do the ones that you can't you're either going to employ people who can do it uh, or you're going to learn yourself because there is a mo you're motivated to learn yes. whereas at school you're not motivated to learn because you're always being told off and you're doing things that you don't want to do. So mm. they're forcing things onto you that you can't do. And then your brain says, you know, you are stupid, you can't do it. So, so what they're actually teaching is truancy because you don't want to slap. Yeah. You know, you, on a Wednesday afternoon, when you know there's a, the curriculum says uh, spelling, and you know you're going to get a good slap around the head for being disruptive because you don't know what page you're on, or just because I didn't know what page you were on, it, w it wasn't my problem because I couldn't do it, that, but they thought I was just being disruptive. So yes. a good slap around the head, they thought would put pay to that and I would start reading. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't turn up at the class. I guess you wanted to get out of that environment. As I, I, as you I, could. Who wants to be punished for something they can't do? So I wouldn't be there. And then that made it even worse. So it was a spiral, a, bit, a downward spiral. And if somebody says you, you, you're incapable because you're stupid, and then you believe it, and then you, you're so uptight, you can't relax, yeah. and you can't learn these things because you know that any second now, somebody's going to come and punish you yes. for trying. So that was good. Yeah. So that's my backstory um, of, of education. What's your view on education today? I mean, I uh, was in school when we still used to get beat up by the teachers, so I can relate to some of what you're saying. And these days, maybe some kids can't because, um, you know, if uh, little Johnny's not behaving, they get the parents in and then the parents tell the teacher off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's not a, a the curriculum. I don't think the curriculum is good. I think education is vital. Yes. But not the education that's, that... Um, I went through or what's probably happening. I, I do believe that you should concentrate on what you like, what you yes. can do, and then you will learn what you need to. And there's, there's maybe too much education on the wrong things. Mm. So, uh, it's the I, right type of education, which I is probably bet. not what we're getting in school. Schools is a fairly general education. But, uh, for example, those people interested in business um, or entrepreneurship, there's very little uh, encouragement of any sort that exists in schools right now. Well, w the, the, one of the biggest problems, I think, is because the teachers have never been in business. Yeah. So they've been in school. So the, the teachers have been to school, they've been to another school, which is college or uh, university, and then they've gone back to school. So they never really left school. And I do believe that teachers uh, should probably have a, a 20 jobs inside their school curriculum. So when, when they decide to be a teacher, they go out into the world, they have a, a job for three months, and then they go on to another one and another one, and it's all laid out for them. So they're experiencing... It's that practical what, experience. Yeah, yes. practical experience. Theory. Yeah, and, and then they'll have uh, better... Uh, knowledge to be able to teach uh, somebody who wants to 
um, buy a house and uh, you know have a mortgage and uh, uh, holidays and cars and different things. Well, you know they they can teach. Yes. Uh, they can educate people to be uh, uh, to clean toilets, to make tea, to do all the things that the employer starts a, a young person off from day one and they're running around doing work for people and learning and watching and learning. Well, that could have all been done at school. So from that background, what got you into a self-employed situation? Was it a case of, well, nobody wants me as an employee and this is what I need to do? Or do you think it came more from the fact that actually I don't want to go into that environment, what everybody else there is There was two, uh, two things. Mm -hmm. The first one was that Nobody wants somebody who can't read and write. They want somebody who can organise. Well, I could organise. I, I got no issue in organising things and picking up uh, how to do uh, practical jobs. But as soon as you was promoted, you also have that uh, added responsibility of writing in the diary what happened today. You know who was in, who was sick, who was, uh, you know, do what jobs were done, and uh, a, a list of jobs to complete and I couldn't do that. I could do it if somebody told me. I could remember 20 yeah. jobs that we needed to do, but I couldn't uh, have it in writing. And so therefore, when they find out that you're incapable of that, and they won't give you a secretary, you know, so uh, you, you leave. You're forced to leave or you run before people start calling you stupid again because it goes back to school, you've got that in your head that uh, people are going to start calling you stupid and, and so there was that, job after job after job and there was the other thing of uh, because I met Marilyn uh, when she was 15 and, and I, was, I was 16 and one week I was, um, I met her on the 25th of June uh, 1966 wow. uh, and um, so we had our goals and one of them was to be together okay to get married to have a house to have kids and to work together which was pie in the sky because we didn't know what we could do we hadn't got a clue we hadn't got no money so we didn't know but we wanted and that want was there for eight years from 1966 to 1974 and the want was there and the need was there but the excuses were there as well yeah I can't I can't I want to but I can't I want to but I can't I haven't got any money I haven't got any skills how can we look after ourselves you know we've got the mortgage we've got the rates you've got everything to go with it whatever happens in the future uh, cannot be any worse than what is happening now. Yes. And so therefore, if you're in a bad relationship or a bad job or anything that's bad and it is dreadful and it's, your stomach is churning and your, your anxiety is, is hitting the roof and you hate what you're doing and you're hating the situation, then what taking a leap into the unknown cannot be any worse yes, yes. than what you're in at the moment. Because you already feel you're at the lowest possible point. You're How much worse can it, can it get? Exactly, yeah. exactly. You touched on some really key points there that that want was inside you that you and you had a, an overall goal that we want to be together, we'd want to work together, do something together. But you didn't have a clear plan exactly. This is what we're going to do. This is the business model. This is how we're going to market. This is how we're going to make this money. And this is how we're going to retire. And this time next year, Rodney, we're going to be millionaires. So that plan wasn't there. But the bigger vision was that there was something that you going, you, you, you wanted to try and achieve. But I think some of that's really important that you mentioned there is the want inside. How important is it? And I, I think if we find it's important enough we find a way to do it and too many people find excuses not to. I, I think most people are uh, too um, well off to become millionaires. Mm. I had somebody uh, the other day was talking to me and said you know never I could have um, I could have been where you are but the problem was I was getting too much money. It was like you was getting nothing, you was, you was yeah. desperate 
and I wasn't. I wasn't desperate enough. And so I had my weekly income, my weekly wage, and uh, I didn't have to do much for it, and this is what they were saying, and so life was great. And for you, it wasn't great. But it didn't, what I was getting, it didn't motivate, what he was getting didn't motivate him to get more. Yes. Because he'd got too much and life was too easy. It was easy. comfortable. There wasn't really that burning desire to want to achieve no. any more than that. No. So what was the burning desire inside you that made the leap to, oh well, I'm just going to start my own business? Um, I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> so it <usually> helps. <laughs> so it helps because I do say to a lot of people now, the best thing what could happen to you because you're procrastinating. You want it, but you won't do it. You're ex you've got excuse after excuse after excuse, and the best thing whatever could happen to you is you get fired. And the people who hate their jobs and carry on with their jobs, I say you, they'll fire you sooner. The, the sooner the better for for you and for the company. Yeah. And, and so, well, I got fired and, um, and it was from the 60s to the 70s, you could, if you got fired in the morning, mm -hmm. you could go and knock on somebody's door in the afternoon and get a job. Yeah. It was easy, it was so easy. And, um, and then it all stopped, 1973, 74, uh, it was um, a bad year because uh, there was a recession and there was a million people unemployed in this country and, and so who is going to employ me when all the application forms that I'd ever filled, I never filled an application form in before, it was my mouth that got me the job or the secretary who was in the, um, in the office uh, and I would uh, take my glasses off before I went in and so I've come to for the job interview and they say fill the form in mm -hmm. and I go oh sorry I've, um, I forgot my glasses because I couldn't fill it in yeah. uh, could you help me and they oh yeah that's no problem what's your name what's your address what's your da -da 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 -da, you know and that's yes. and they did it yeah and it was great but you know you couldn't you couldn't carry on through life pretending no. you've left yeah. your glasses at home you you know you there's a there's a thing where you've got to stop Anyway, they stopped it for me. Mm -hmm. I was on the dole. I was, uh, I, I was begging for another two pounds a week to feed my family because the rest of the money was taken up with a mortgage and, we, and with uh, all the facility, you know, the gas and electric and whatever, uh, whatever. Uh, and, and so therefore I needed another two pounds. And they looked at my, um, um, my file and they said, you've got one child. And I said, yes, I can't afford to feed it and, and, uh, and have another child then. And then you'll get your two pounds. Wow. You go, you are mad. You know, what, what kind of advice are you giving me? Mm. And if I'd have took the advice, there'd have been three generations now on assistance. Yes. yes. But I was uh, hot-headed, you know, and um, I knew everything and knew nothing, but I was hot-headed and had an altercation with the person. And then I realized why the desk in those uh, dole offices were high and wide because you couldn't get over them to get hold of the person <laughs> who was abusing you. And was a, I thought there was abusing me and, um, and I left. He said, uh, you, you know, are you saying you want to leave? I said, yes. Yeah. And I thought, I'm thinking he's going to negotiate because right. if I leave, then he's not going to have a job. If everybody leaves the dole, he, they won't have a job. And I thought they was going to negotiate for that two pounds, and they didn't. They just signed you off. <laughs> exactly. I shot There's a queue of people in. behind you. Queue of people. Yeah. And he just and I and I stood there staring at him, and he said, "Can I help you?" And I go, "Yeah. What do what do we do now?" He said, "What do we do? What do you do? You don't have to come here anymore. Next." Wow. And so I went out of the dole, uh, shooting myself in the foot, not getting that money for that week. And uh, I thought I'd let Marilyn down. So I cried on the way home. You know, and, then I, and then I composed myself mm. and, and sitting on my bike in Allen Road, uh, drying my eyes, thinking, this is it. You've got to wake up now. You've got to burn your bridges and become responsible. 
So everything in life, you have to be responsible. You can't blame anybody else. Yes. It's not fair. It's their fault. You can't blame anybody else. It's, it, you, the book stops with you. Except and I swore to myself, and it's, it's on the back of the book here, uh, about um, the person who has uh, uh, had my life in their hands, basically. Yeah. And I said, i never go begging to anybody like him ever again. It's amazing you talk about these key points within your journey and you mentioned the book the book's amazing and uh, <laughs> Thank we'll, you. we'll make sure we put a link up to the uh, <laughs> book as well for people to to get uh, you know I was saying to you just before we started when I first uh, got the book uh, I'd listen to it rather than read it um, I went over it twice which I very rarely do on a book and because there's just so many nuggets in it uh, in the book in life there'll be so many decisions that we'll have to make and sometimes we don't realize the enormity of each of those decisions and the impact they might have and sometimes people might look at somebody like yourself and say, well, they've had it easy, success has just been a straight line like this. But the reality is, and especially when you, when you read the book, you realise there were so many challenges and so many failures before success showed its face. I learnt very quickly that um, when you have a failure, <clears throat> some people class it as a failure, and I didn't because it was just learning. You don't, you, you, you keep uh, doing, if you do the same thing tomorrow as you've done today, then you'll either be a failure or a success. <clears throat> so you do more of what worked and less of what didn't work yes. or nothing of what didn't work. So, so you, you're going on forward. And I had seen friends and, uh, and acquaintances that have tripped over, metaphorically speaking, tripped over uh, and the person didn't pay, or who they was working for didn't pay for the job. Mm -hmm. and, they've, and they give up. And they give up because it wasn't fair, they didn't pay me and I'll never do that again. And so they have a life of saying, I could have, yes. I should have, I would have, but I didn't because this person, this, and they take it through their life that as somebody so insignificant had, had ruled their life for 40 years and they've made that their crutch to hobble about on. Yes. And, uh, and so I saw this. somebody else. Yeah, and I saw this with people and I remember I burned my bridges. I'm not going begging to anybody. I am responsible. And if the shit hits a fan, <laughs> that's it. I'm responsible. And I just have to get over it. And uh, it was uh, uh, an occurrence uh, that occurred um, every week, <laughs> every day. <laughs> and you get used to it. Yes. So. But it isn't a smooth journey straight to success. There's lots of challenges you'll face. One of the things that I learned about your, uh, your journey, yours and Marilyn, that you're both grafters. And you'll do whatever it takes to keep going, keep pushing forward, as long as it's uh, legal and not immoral. <laughs> Just keep going. Do you think today, generation, today's generation has that kind of drive and impact, or do you think? Well, um, you see these uh, people coming over to England on a, a boat, on a, on a blow-up dinghy, right? Some of them uh, are desperate. I won't say all of them, but some of them are really, really desperate. And they have nothing in the world. And they're, they're running away from, uh, because if they stay, they'll probably be killed or starved to death. Yeah. So those people, uh, in 20 years, 30 years time, uh, will be, a lot, of, a lot of them will have used their, uh, um, their skills and become uh, a millionaire, multi-millionaire. They'll be employing people. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of people we need. And, uh, and it's through desperation. Yes. You know, they can survive. I, I said to somebody the other day, you know, we've got, I don't know how much we, well, we earned a lot of money this last year. And I'm still making soup that costs like 12, 12p a time. You know, it's like, and, and, and it's good. And it's, and you can do it. And so a lot of people 
wouldn't, uh, wouldn't start to educate themselves on saving money and making money and, uh, and looking around them because money is everywhere Yes. Uh, and it's just hiding and it's yours and, um, and, until it will, and then you'll find money will come to you because it's like money is attracting money it wants to be uh, with a person that's going to look after it yes. and when I say look after it um, if you looked at money as a, 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 as a person all these all, the, all this money would come to you because you're looking after it and I don't mean burying it not under the mattress. That's not under the mattress, not in the garden. I know somebody who's got a tin box and it's in the garden and it's got money in it. Anyway, so the thing is, it's not doing any good. Yes. Money is like people. Money likes to be worked. People like to be worked. When they laid off um, 8 million people, I think uh, this last year, they laid off and they paid them. You know, that was one of the worst things that you could possibly do because you get bored, you get up to mischief, you get lazy uh, and uh, it doesn't work. People need to work and money needs to work. And, and uh, I forgot the question and I don't know what we were talking That's okay. about. So we talk about drive that today generation in terms right. of whether they're hungry enough or whether they just want immediate gratification. They don't want to put the hard work in. No, they, uh, I, I won't generalise in, in, in a way because there is, it takes all types of people. But if it wasn't for the lazy people, the people who want to work wouldn't get on so quick. Yeah. They wouldn't achieve so much because 98% of people uh, don't want money and don't want to work. They don't want to educate themselves and so that's great for the 2% that do. It makes it so much easier for somebody who actually wants to put 5% extra w energy into it. I mean, I, I, when I was uh, doing property maintenance and window cleaning this property maintenance and uh, I decided not to have a window cleaning round because I'd got a seal in. 20 houses a day, five days a week, you have to have 200 houses because you, you go in every fortnight and then you knew exactly how much you would earn and then you would have to have a mortgage to suit that, then you'd have to have your lifestyle to suit that and I didn't want that, I didn't want any seal in on my uh, income. That's a really important point because even if you're self-employed but you choose to sell your time for money then you've limited what you're going to earn regardless of whether you're working for yourself or you're working for somebody else but when you can start leveraging business, assets, property that's when you can grow beyond that. All I had when I started was time so therefore uh, when I uh, I looked at it when I was painting because uh, rapidly the property maintenance um, rapidly grew and uh, so it, it grew from cleaning windows which is property maintenance to cleaning gutters and then uh, mending fences and cleaning drains and then painting and then putting roofs tiles on and, the, uh, and um, when the wind blew and they blew some tiles off the roof I was a roofer Yes. You know, all of a sudden, I'd, I'd gained yes. a new skill, but I needed a longer ladder. And, and this is where yeah, investing in your uh, company, you've got to invest all the time into your company, whether it's uh, time, energy, or the money that you make. So you can't just take that money out and squander it. You know, you've got to be putting it back in so you can do better jobs, bigger jobs, more profitable jobs, and more mentally rewarding jobs. Because I didn't want to be cleaning windows all the yeah. time because, you know, it's not, a, it's not something that I wanted to do. I wanted to, I, my ADHD drove me to the next thing and the next and the next. Mm -hmm. And it's like all day long. And um, that's, that's how I am but it's exciting and, and, and so a lot of people won't do it which is good it leaves more room for the people who do yes, and when I was painting way. I could earn twice as much as the next person uh, because I could uh, start two hours early I could uh, go faster I could uh, skip my lunch uh, in, because I couldn't afford it anyway so I skipped it uh, and then work two hours longer yes. So four hours longer in the day, working quicker, and... Um, you almost end up with twice the results. Twice, yeah. yeah. And it's that, grafting, it's that grafting mentality that it comes back down to. 
And you need to because you need to keep fit. Yes. So, and you need the money and you need it and you want, there's a want, a desire to have things. Why can't I have what the next door neighbor's got? Mm. You know, um, well I can. It's just that I've got to have delayed gratification yes. and uh, very often and um, I've just got to work harder than them. Yes. The reality is we're in a country where it's so easy for anybody to be able to start something and build uh, a business, build an infrastructure, build systems that are going to start creating wealth uh, for you. It, it is easy um, in one way because there is so much now that you can do. But I find that people have got such a choice mm -hmm. that they go, shall I do this? Or shall I do that? Shall I do that? Shall I do this? Uh, I don't know what to do, so I, never, I won't do anything. It's indecision. And yet when I, uh, in the 60s, there wasn't much that a person like I could do, you know, because, um, I, I do believe that I was educated to be gone a gun fodder for the next war, yeah. and that which didn't come, so I, I still sur I survived. Mm. I did longer than um, what people would expect, because if you went into a war at age of 16, 17, you may not see 20. Yes. So therefore, I survived and. Um, uh, and it was easier because you could be a carpenter, yeah. electrician, a painter, in my field because I wasn't uh, academic. So it was very few things that you could do. If you was an engineer, well, you'd need some, you, you'd need uh, to, to read and write. And, um, but things like painting, you didn't, you know. So Neville, in your life, you've achieved massive success as a financial measure, I'm sure in other parts of your life as well. Do you think if someone's starting today, is it still possible to achieve these huge types of successes, financial successes? Do you think it's even possible? Do you think it's easier, it's harder? Well, it, I, I think it is uh, easier probably because you. I was speaking to a farmer uh, last night, a uh, big, big farmer, um, and they can't get uh, can't get stuff. Yeah. They can't get. They're ploughing potatoes. They're leaving potatoes to rot. They're leaving fruit. Uh, this year they've been leaving fruit to rot. Some they can't stuff. get people to do it. Yes. And he said, uh, most people in this country don't want to do it. Don't want to do that manual labour. Don't want to go onto the fields and the farms and uh, and do it. But um, yeah, so. Everywhere there's vacancies. You go to the coffee shop, mm. you know, you've got to wait in a queue. Why? Because they're off sick or they're yes. not. They've got the machines, yeah. vacancies. Got the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine, he's now got machines to do the work. And that's, and people go, well, you're putting all these people out of a job. And he goes, no, I had to get the machines because I've got no staff. Yes. So, I now work on a third less staff than I did two years ago, not because I want to, because I have to. And now I have to, I've brought the machines in to do, to do the work. I guess I'll uh, start doing the car factories with the automation. In yeah, the, uh, I mean, that started in the 60s. Yeah. It did. Uh, so, yeah, so I think it is, it is easier if, if the person makes up their mind what they really truly you know, want to be, if they want to be in business. Yes. And then you've got to find what I would say your element. Yes. Because if you are working in your element, then, then you have no, for, for, oh, I see you've got a nice yeah. phone, but you're not, 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 not a phone, it's a, a watch. Yeah. So whether you've got a watch on or not, you don't take any notice of it because you are so yes. focused you're on what you do. You, you love what you're doing and you want to get that done. And so therefore, you are in your element doing something uh, and uh, it's nothing to do with money and nothing yes. to do but you the money comes along as a byproduct if you could spend your time doing that you're much more creative and productive and probably produce more create more because you're in the flow all the time but the reality is in business there's all these other things that need to be done 
but you've made a key point about if you understand yourself, you know what strengths you have, or where maybe you're not so great, how you can leverage other people around you. I think I agree today, I think it's much, much easier to build businesses um, and probably not go through as much pain as you did <laughs> building uh, building yours. Just because the world is smaller, information is at our fingertips, the, you know, the phones that we have in our pockets are just immensely powerful in terms of what we can just tap into and information we can get just like that. See, it's incredible, it is, because uh, if you wanted to communicate with somebody, you had to write a letter and then you had to post it and then you had to wait for two weeks, maybe three, before you got a reply. Now, it's a phone. Yeah, it's but you talk to your phone and it sends a message and it's incredible it is Neville what are you doing property wise right now I know in the recent year um, in the recent years you've been involved in building 600 homes um, been involved in property way before I was even born um, so early 70s was your first purchase what sort of property projects are you doing today so we're doing more commercial uh, sheds there's a demand for... So just to be clear, you're not retired and sort of doing a I, around I, doing nothing all day? Well, people say, why are you not retired? And I go, well, what is retirement? And they go, doing what you want to do when you want to do it. <laughs> uh, and I go, uh, let me think about this. Well, I came out of mainstream employment at the age of 24. So I started to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And I may have been forced, uh, I forced myself to want to do it because I had to so I retired at 24 from mainstream employment and do you get uh, a singer uh, a painter or a, an artist uh, do you get them retire oh, I don't think so mm -hmm. you know you get an entertainer uh, they, they, they carry on until they drop down on the stage and die you know and they why would what is retirement? Yes. Uh, you know, I, what is retirement different to uh, what I'm doing now? Um, had somebody say yesterday, oh, we're slowing down. We don't do, we get up late and we don't do so much now. And uh, in fact, we don't do anything really. And um, is, is that something to be proud of? Mm. Or can you say today, I've t taught people, I've given people my knowledge so I've had 70, nearly 72 years of knowledge uh, and uh, good and bad and whatever is knowledge. And if I can give that to the next person uh, or a lot of people, then why not? Because yes. it's probably saved them a lot of heartache uh, along the line that, that we had. Uh, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have heartache and you shouldn't have uh, the, these things because if you had such a smooth ride and you went from here to up there to what you thought success was uh, with no problems well i don't i don't Probably see it as a, i don't yeah. see it as a uh, a good journey yes. because you need to laugh and you need to cry and you need to uh, have setbacks you know and you uh, look at it when people are taking the penalty uh, they walk backwards mm -hmm. and then they um, and they run forwards. So you have to go backwards in life before you can go forwards yeah. very often. And you go to go forward at a much quicker pace and, and your goals are much bigger. So your main focus now is commercial property. Yeah. What advice would you give to somebody who's looking to start right. property now? Okay, what do they want to do? What, what are they into at the moment? Normally, you can't get into building uh, an 80,000, six million pound property the kind so, of project you're doing uh, the kind of project that we're doing yeah. we've just got permission this week uh, for about 240,000 square foot of industrial you know you took you probably talking about 20 million pounds and and that took like two years to get the planning permission and then we had to buy the site before and we spent 400,000 on the demolition and and the thing is people can't do that uh, most people who want to get into property can't do that so that's impossible because that is a goal that you could get in probably 20 years time uh, and, uh, and then even if you was given the money, have you got the skills to do it? Can you mentally uh, cope with it? Because, you know, the, there's a lot of mental um, 
problems if you're doing something that you're not capable of doing. So you do what you feel is right. So you start off with one house and, you, and if you want to turn it into a multiple occupation or if you just want to turn it into a home and like we did, we, we used our houses as our home and then we moved and moved and moved. And, but it's what you feel comfortable with. And a, so many people go, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a millionaire, want to be, you know, and it's like, well, okay, there's no problem. Uh, but I want next week. Ne no, what, what do you mean I can't? You know, and it's like, you can, but not next week. Yes. And it's and if you win the lotto, you'll still lo you'll lose it anyway. Yeah. Because you haven't got those skills. You need to get that, that education, get the skills, and um, and people need to educate themselves uh, and do one little bit and move forward, and the next, and the next, and the next. But that is the fun of it. Yes. Building that. I've always seen property as something that's slow and steady and you might get a, a few easy quick wins along the way but it's a long-term journey but it'll get you very wealthy over over time and over the last 50 odd years you've been involved in in property do you think those opportunities are still going to continue going forward or do you think the property market is now had its time um they said that's uh a question i ask myself every day <laughs> but i've asked it for the last 50 years yeah. you know so um I, I, I'm buying property now and uh, I bought one last week and uh, so it's it, oh no I bought two last week and it's it hasn't stopped you know it's um, it's, it's one of these things that it goes up and down like the stock market like everything um, like the flu season you know comes along and it comes and goes and uh, and, and winter follows uh, autumn and then there's spring and that's it and that's the way that's the way of the world that's the way it goes you've got to uh, feel comfortable with what you're doing you've got to feel excited uh, uh, of what you're doing and that you've got to see what can be done what you what your vision is your goals and uh, if your goal is to get a house and um, and renovate it then you give yourself how many weeks to do it what are you going to do what's the end goal are you going to sell it you're going to rent it you know we had to um, uh, buy and sell buy and sell for 12 years before we could keep anything yes and and it, we didn't want to be buying and selling we wanted to keep things so that we could have a rental income but that's what enabled you to start moving forward to move to ownership because you started building up the um, the capital but it took 12 years yeah. to do it and then and then one day we realized that uh, what we was going to sell uh, which was a piece of land to another builder yeah. and they backed and no, they didn't back out but he was messing about and we backed out and we built what he was going to build right so therefore our minds had changed uh, because we thought it was there was going to build a shop and um, and that was it because it was a pub uh, it was designated for a pub in the middle of a massive uh, a new area with houses and the pub trade had gone right down and so what it was going to be a 7-eleven or something like that the tesco's or whatever and then i realized that there was going to build six shops not one and there's going to build two houses okay and i thought well i'll have that yes if you but i gave them another four days to complete or to exchange and they'd got the planning permission mm -hmm. they, they, they they didn't do it yeah so i'd give them plenty of uh, warning and then we took it and we said we, we we'll do it and then yes. we realized that we would keep it and we those could were the first it. properties that you started to then keep yes prior to that was buying selling, buying and selling. selling. so i've still okay. got those they're producing i don't know thirty six thousand pound a year um there's two houses i did a deal with a, a, a builder and uh he, he took the he built the houses for himself and so he had that piece of land and he built the shops for us that one project in itself thirty-six thousand pounds a year from part of that 
is probably more than the average salary in this country that right. most people would, uh, would earn. And that cost me £72,000 to build those wow. units. So every second year I get the money back over and over. And we've had them for 20, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. It's phenomenal. Yeah, so... Uh, so Neville, two pieces of parting advice then. Of what? Uh, two pieces uh, of parting advice. All right. Uh, the first is somebody who's looking to get started in business, but they're a little bit unsure. What, what would you say to them? What advice would you give to them? The best thing is for them to get fired. Yes. <laughs> when you've Make got life your, uncomfortable. Yeah. When you've, when you've got your back against the wall and you've got to do it, you've got to, you've got to be thinking, what, uh, how am I going to do this? And you've got to start running. You know, it's, there's no procrastinating. You've got to start running and you've got to start doing anything you can. And maybe you've got somebody who they know what they want to do, yeah. but um, the time's not right because the kids are on holiday and what would, they, what would they do with the kids if they start a business? Well, I'd take them with me, you know, because you, as self-employed, you can do what you like. Yes. And um, you, could, you could bring your kids uh, today, you know, and, and, and there's people have a hang up about uh, taking their kids to work. Well, I never did, you know. Um, and, and so you can run your life as you want it. So Neville, final question for you. Somebody that's maybe already in business and they've been a, an entrepreneur for a little while, they're starting to experience feast and famine. Some months are doing really well, some months are struggling, and they're thinking, is there a future? Do I chuck in the towel and go back to an easier life? What would you say to somebody like that? Um, it's usually a harder life that they go back. They, so when we was in uh, kiddie care, for instance, uh, it's same uh, applies to building as well. Whatever business we was doing, if you find uh, that's going on, so uh, you look for other things that's associated with it. And that's how we grew. You know, if you're going to sell uh, prams, you're going to sell cots, you're going to sell toys, you're going to sell clothes, you're going to sell, you know, whatever. And how you do it, you, you, you sell in the bricks and mortar and you sell online. So there's, so there's always something that you could expand and you drop things that are not working. And, but if you keep it to that uh, area of business that you know, it's easier. Because when we went into um, the internet, we'd already got stock, yes. we'd already got the staff for the pick and pack, we'd all, already got the uh, premises, we got the warehouses, and so it was just another form of selling. So you, it, the business evolves slightly as opposed to making a jump into something completely different? Yeah, I see so many people, things are not working, and they jump out of it and they do something completely different. You start again from and zero. And they think the grass is greener. I did that. I, I, I do a blog every week um, on my website, and uh, I, I did that the other day. The grass is always seems to be yes. greener, uh, and actually it's not. You know, there's there's things to trip you up, whatever you do. So evolve. You know, the business yes. needs to evolve. And if you haven't changed at five o'clock when you come out of your business, or maybe like a, I don't know what, I'm still working at twelve, one, two, three. It doesn't make make any difference to me. Uh, time's immaterial. So so the thing is, at the end of your shift, your day, if that hasn't changed between eight o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night there's something wrong and it doesn't have to be a physical change it could be a mental change it could be an idea it could be a seed that you sow and it grows you know and it's um because that, that's what businesses are yes. you plant the seed and you have to water it and fertilize it and look after it you have to look after yes. that uh, plant like and you the same as the business and as you were saying earlier, it's thinking about are you adding value each and every day to what you're doing or are you actually taking value away? Yes, yeah. Neville, it's been such a pleasure spending time with you. <laughs> Learned so much and I would strongly encourage you to get the book. We'll put the link in the description. Um, so many nuggets there. I'm actually on my third listen to this book, <laughs> as I was saying, which I very rarely do. <laughs> Neville, thank you again so much. No, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>